the NHL has seen some pretty awesome brother combinations, from the Burray brothers to the Big Bad Hatcher brothers, what seems like 30 different Sutter brothers, the Sedin twins, the Stastny's, the Espositos, the list goes on and on, the Richards, you can list them on forever, but there's a new bro tandem in the NHL and that is Jack and Quinn Hughes. It's also worth noting there is another brother coming up who will be drafted in this upcoming NHL entry draft, but we'll save that for another video. In this video, we are going to be simming the entire careers of Jack and Quinn Hughes, see which brother has the best NHL career. We're going to be using a computer team. We're going to be staying out of the way of Jack and Quinn, letting the Canucks and the Devils build a team around their two young superstars, and we're going to see which brother has the best NHL career when it's all said and done. Starting off the simulation, Quinn Hughes starts off with medium elite and 86 overall. He is in the last year of his entry-level deal, so the Canucks gonna have to pay Quinn Hughes big time to keep him on the blue line. He has one year of NHL experience, so does Jack Hughes, starting off 80 overall, but Jack Hughes is listed as high elite, so you're gonna see him grow really, really quickly. He's got two years left on his entry level deal. He struggled in year number one. He had 21 points in 61 games, so we're looking for a big redemption tour here from Jack Hughes. In year number one of our simulation, the Canucks just make the playoffs with 89 points, and it's the exact opposite for the New Jersey Devils. They are in the basement. 54 points, only 24 wins on the year. Jack Hughes has a pretty good sophomore season, finishing with 64 points, and he is up to an 86 overall, so that's awesome to see him growing. Only 20 years old. Quinn Hughes has 54 points. Not a bad year. 87 overall, so he jumps up as well, and miraculously the Vancouver Canucks, they get redemption on the Boston Bruins, and they win the Stanley Cup Cup in year number one, so right away Quinn Hughes has the advantage with the Stanley Cup. For some reason, Tanner Pearson won the Conn Smythe. Utica also won the Calder Cup, so a great year for Vancouver. New Jersey unfortunately loses the draft lottery, dropping from one to four, and with the fourth overall pick, they pick up Russian defenseman Ivan Fedorov, who becomes a big piece of the New Jersey Devils in the future. A little spoiler alert for you. But in year number two, the Vancouver Canucks don't make a lot of changes but Quinn Hughes is up to a 90 overall and he signs a 7.2 million dollar contract per year for four years so he's locked up on the blue line as for Jack they put Jack Hughes on the wing he is still high elite at 88 overall in the last year of his entry level deal so they're gonna have to pay him as well it's nice to see some younger guys coming up here like Alexander Holtz for the New Jersey Devils hopefully they don't end up in the basement once again they do bring in Frederick Anderson so they are making strides. In year number two, the defending Stanley Cup champions also finished with 89 points, just like they did last year, and unfortunately, the New Jersey Devils make a small stride, not finishing last, but finishing second last in the NHL, and Jack Hughes has 81 points, so steadily improving every single year, this time up to a 91 overall. Quinn Hughes, steady as ever, 89 overall, and he has a monster year with 60 points. Unfortunately, the Canucks get bounced in the first round and picking fourth overall once again the New Jersey Devils select Brad Lambert a nice medium elite center they're gonna have Nico Heischer they're gonna have Jack Hughes Brad Lambert they're gonna be stacked Hughes drops down to an 87 overall but PK Subban comes over from New Jersey to hang out with the other Hughes brother Jack Hughes still on the wing at a 91 overall and they lock him up eight years 7.8 million dollars the Canucks have a huge year in year number three finishing finishing fourth in the league, and the New Jersey Devils finally make the playoffs with the magic number, it seems, 89 points. And in year number three, Jack Hughes finally breaks out for 102 points, up to a 92 overall. Him and Nico Heischer are really doing it all for New Jersey, 97 and 102 points. Not a bad tandem there. As for Quinn Hughes, he stays around the 55 to 60 point mark, just steady. He has another good year with 56 points. 
Unfortunately, both teams get eliminated in the first round in seven games, New Jersey to the Rangers and the Canucks to the Blues. Headed into year number four here, not a lot of change. They bring in Max Pacioretty. The defense basically stays the exact same. Quinn Hughes is back up in overall to 88. He's playing with Nate Schmidt, so it looks like P.K. Subban didn't stick around that long. Ivan Fedorov now makes the New Jersey Devils at an 84 overall, and the first line of New Jersey is nasty. They move Jack Hughes back to the center position. The Triple H line here in New Jersey with Hughes, Holtz, and Heischer. Not bad. Both teams make the playoffs, so it's nice that we're seeing consistent postseason action from both of the Hughes brothers. Jack Hughes has a pretty good year. 87 points falls off from the 100-point campaign he had last year. Quinn Hughes sets a career high with 63 points on the year. Not bad for Quinn Hughes there. Now, I was looking at the awards, and I kind of got sidetracked here because Eric Carlson decided to take home every single award. He took home all of the hardware. He had himself a crazy year. I know this is a Hughes video, but I gotta focus on Carlson here. Look at those numbers. That is insane. And I actually forgot to put the uh, playoffs in here, but both teams were eliminated in the second round. Going into year number five here, Hughes, Holton, Heischer once again are a sick line. 90s everywhere. As for the Canucks, they bring in Kevin Fiala. They don't really change a whole a lot on their offensive core. Quinn Hughes has a huge jump up to a 91 overall in the last year of his deal, so he's looking to get paid. The New Jersey Devils finish 10th in the NHL, and for the first time, the Canucks are on the outside looking in with 91 overall Quinn Hughes. They finish 24th in the NHL. Uh, Jack Hughes has 93 points at 24 years old. It's great to see Jack finding some offensive success early on. Quinn Hughes drops to an 88 overall as the Canucks fail to make the playoffs for the first time in this sim. He's been a consistent 50 to 60 point guy. And as for the postseason, the New Jersey Devils don't find their way out of the first round. You hate to see it. Going into year number six, the Canucks don't do anything else to entice Quinn Hughes. He signs a big ticket though, 9.3 million for the next three years. And they don't really do a whole lot, unfortunately, but the New Jersey Devils do everything. They bring in Jonathan Tays, a proven playoff performer. They also bring in Victor Hedman at a 90 overall to play alongside of Ivan Fedorov. So in my eyes, they are poised to go on a run and the Canucks make the playoffs so they bounce back and it's the exact opposite. New Jersey fails to make the playoffs after bringing in two huge additions. I was absolutely shocked. Uh, we got Ivan Fedorov here putting up some big numbers with Jack Hughes. 83 points for Hughes and 58 for Fedorov. Hughes drops down to a 91 overall. Quinn Hughes, though, he sets career highs, finishes with a 90 overall and 77 points. He's looking for that Norris Trophy. He's also looking for another Stanley Cup to add to the resume, but the Nashville Predators have other plans. They sweep the Canucks in the first round, but the New Jersey Devils win the draft lottery going from 13 to 1. So it looks like Jack Hughes is going to have another superstar player to play with. Victor Hedman wants none of that. He goes from New Jersey to Vancouver. He does the P.K. Subban treatment. He wants to play with both Hughes brothers and Quinn's up to a 90 overall. And they're not being very generous with their goaltenders. They have a 67 overall, so that's not good news for the Vancouver Canucks. Year number seven shows Jack Hughes at a 91 overall. Still has high leap at 21 years old. Their prospects are growing. This team is going to look very, very good in a few years. The Canucks have 94 points. They make the postseason. Season, and the New Jersey Devils once again on the outside looking in. They can't find any playoff success. The middle Hughes bro in year number seven ties the team lead with 88 points up to a 93 overall. As for brother Quinn, he has a nice amount of points with 69, leading the Canucks in defensive scoring. As per usual, nothing changes there. In the playoffs, the Vancouver Canucks finally get out of the first round, but Connor McDavid says, nope, you're not getting past round number two. Year number eight shows Hughes at a 93 overall. Their team is finally coming together. As for the Canucks, though, they're not really doing a whole lot of anything. Uh, looks like Victor Hedman left town. Quinn Hughes back up to a 90 overall. And the Canucks trade Brock Besser for two first round picks. I don't understand the logic towards that, but it doesn't seem to be a good move because both the New Jersey Devils and the Canucks both miss out on the playoffs. You absolutely hate to see it. 
The oldest Hughes brother sets a career high in points, but has yet to win a Norris Trophy, and you'll find out why in a couple of minutes. He's up to a 90 overall in the last year of his contract. Jack Hughes has 95 points, so both of the Hughes brothers have been so incredibly steady. Aside from year one, though, we haven't really had much playoff success for either team. Quinn Hughes is back down to an 87 overall, but he signs a huge ticket, 12.8 million for seven years. Brother Jack still at a 91 overall. This is that guy they drafted first overall, Nicholas Christensen. He's 20 years old at 89 overall. So again, the New Jersey Devils are putting all the pieces together, including bringing back Victor Hedman, going from New Jersey to Vancouver, back to New Jersey. New Jersey makes the playoffs, so do the Vancouver Canucks as well, just squeaking in with 93 points. Jack has another fantastic year at 28 years old. He has 104 points, so setting a career high with 35 goals and 69 assists. So he has been the backbone of the New Jersey Devils for the last nine years. As for Quinn Hughes, talking about putting up points, he has another 70-point campaign, but again, has yet to win a Norris Trophy. The playoffs weren't kind to either team, Canucks getting eliminated in the first and the New Jersey Devils getting bounced in the second. You're going to see here why Quinn Hughes hasn't won a Norris Trophy, because Adam Boquist is a cheat code. He wins the Norris every single year. Headed into year number 10 here, the Devils look sick on paper. They just need to put it together in the playoffs. Jack Hughes, last year of his current contract. Again, Quinn Hughes, steady as ever, 90 overall. He's on that big ticket. He's in Vancouver for the long haul. He's been a steady 50-60, now looks like a 70-point defenseman. New Jersey explodes, finishing second in the NHL. The Canucks, they finish seventh. So we have two top 10 teams here. Jack Hughes and Nico Heischer both put up 100 points. Nicholas Christensen with 94. So the Devils are nasty. And talking about putting up points once again, Quinn Hughes has 82 points, but both teams are eliminated in the first round. In the year number 11 here, the Canucks on paper don't look that great aside from Pedersen and Hughes. They are a bright spot on the Vancouver Canucks roster. As for the Devils, they decide to go with the no goaltender approach, which is always a bold strategy. Jack Hughes still a 91 overall. They got 90s everywhere. Holtz, Heischer, Christensen. I mean, we got Ivan Fedorov up at a 90 overall. The Canucks make the playoffs, finishing 13th with 97 points. But the Devils, 87 points, not enough to get it done. Hughes up to a 93, signs a massive deal, 13.1 million for seven years. That is a big boy contract. 96 points. He's playing worthy of that contract, though. And Quinn Hughes, 83 points. He is in his prime. He is putting up numbers. And unfortunately, he's dealing with this. Adam Boquist putting up 113 points a year. He's literally won seven straight Norris trophies. Quinn Hughes is stuck behind him. We're looking for another cup in Vancouver, but Edmonton has other plans, eliminating them in the Western Conference Final. As you can see, Adam Boquist just winning every single Norris Trophy. Quinn Hughes looks a little bit deflated here at 31 years old. He's down to an 87 overall, and the Canucks really haven't done a whole lot to entice Quinn Hughes to stay, so I kind of hope he moves on from the Canucks eventually. Jack Hughes up at a 93. They still don't have a goalie going into year number 12, but it doesn't really matter because they finish 8th in the NHL with 101 points. The Vancouver Canucks just squeak in as well with 92, so again, steady playoff performances. Jack Hughes, again on that massive deal, has kind of a slow year at 79 points. That is the lowest point total in a while for Jack Hughes. Quinn Hughes, though, 90 points, 32 years old. This guy needs a Norris Trophy. It's about time. Come on. And I think this is the year it's going to happen because Merkley and Boquist only finished with a point per game. Hughes had 90. The Oilers once again eliminate the Canucks in the second round. The Devils go down in the first. And finally, it happened. Quinn Hughes wins the Norris Trophy. It's kind of funny to see, though, the uh, Maurice Richard, Ted Lindsay, and the Hart all going to Brock Besser. So that was a big screw up by the Canucks. Going into year number 13, after the Norris Trophy winning season, Hughes is back up to a 91 overall at 32 years old. Younger brother Jack here is now playing with an 80 overall Jacob Peltier. He's still at a 92. And this is the year where Connor McDavid decides to call it quits. A 
bunch of the big boys decide to call it a career. Jack has another big year at 101 points. Still no playoff success for the New Jersey Devils. Quinn Hughes falls back a little bit, 89 overall. He has a 60-point campaign with three years left on his deal. Again, I kind of hope he's going to move on from the Canucks eventually because it's another first-round exit for not only the Canucks but for the Devils as well. Headed into year number 14, the Canucks again are being very frustrating. They're not really doing a whole lot of anything. The New Jersey Devils have stayed the same as well for a few years. They're kind of hoping Jack can bring them to the promised land at 93 overall. 32 years old, four years left on his monster deal as well. The Canucks finish first in the NHL with 110 points. That's a big year for Vancouver. And even though the Devils finished with 97 points, it wasn't enough to get to the dance. Unfortunately, another 100 point campaign wasted for Jack Hughes. Basically identical seasons back to back. He's trying his hardest. As for Quinn Hughes, we see a bit of a drop off here. 51 points. Basically the lowest point total since his rookie year. And in year number 14, it's another early exit for the Canucks. Year number 15 shows Quinn Hughes move over to the right side. I don't know why you would change it after all this time, but okay. In his last year of his deal, why not try something new? Exact same thing with Jack Hughes. He moves over to the left wing. Maybe that's the secret. Just change up the positions here. And in year number 15, the Devils make the playoffs with 89 points, but the Canucks don't with 91. So that is a tough scene for the Vancouver Canucks. Jack Hughes finishes with 76 points, another low point total in year number 15 here. Same thing with Quinn Hughes. He basically falls off a cliff. 88 overall in the last year of his deal. You gotta think he's gonna be moving on at the end of this year. The New Jersey Devils actually go on a deep playoff run, but they lose in the Eastern Conference Final in seven games to the Boston Bruins. In year number 16, the Canucks not only lose Elias Pettersson, but Quinn Hughes. They both decide to test free agency together. Quinn Hughes is done with Vancouver. Let's have a look at younger brother Jack first. For the first time in his career, he is no longer a first line center. He has been demoted to the second line at an 86 overall. I still think he's got lots of hockey left. 34 years old, still a decent overall. And Quinn Hughes was done with the rain in Vancouver. He signs in the desert with the Arizona Coyotes on a one-year $9.525 million contract. The defense on the Yotes is looking really, really good. Bowen Byram, Quinn Hughes, 91 overall, Guy Latondress. Their offense isn't great. Hopefully their back end can carry them throughout the regular season. They do make the postseason, finishing 14th in the NHL. And Jack Hughes, he's got to be getting sick and tired of this. They finish 26th in the NHL. No play playoffs for Jack Hughes. Quinn Hughes though has 57 points in his first year with the Arizona Coyotes. A very Quinn Hughes-esque type year. They knew what they were getting with Quinn and he delivered. Same thing with Jack Hughes. Second line center doesn't matter. He delivered as well with 79 points. Down to an 85 overall. Again, I still think there's more left in the tank and the Arizona Coyotes were eliminated early on and that's it for Quinn Hughes. He gets his Stanley Cup. He gets his Norris trophy and he decides to call it a career. 17 years in the NHL, almost 1400 games played. We'll have a look at his stats afterwards and compare them to Brother Jack's. This is the last year of Jack Hughes' contract in year number 17. So hopefully the New Jersey Devils can make the playoffs and they do just that. Finishing 21st in the NHL, they just squeaked into the playoffs. But again, it's a first round exit by the hands of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Jack Hughes is had it. He's done in New Jersey. He decides to test free agency for the first time in his career at 36 years old. Jack Hughes gave everything and some to the New Jersey Devils. They just couldn't get over the hump. He's looking to win and he signs with the Boston Bruins in year number 18. He signs a two-year deal with the big bad Bruins. He's at 84 overall, 36 years old, a two-year deal at $4.3 million per year. The Bruins are pretty stacked, so this seems like the best team to sign with. We're starting to see some more big guns retire. Austin Matthews, Kachuk, Sveshnikov, Kakaniemi, so there's not many players left in the league that were here when Jack Hughes first started, and it was a great decision to sign with the Bruins. They finished third in the NHL, and again, Jack Hughes is still producing 30 goals, 97 points. What a year. 
and the Bruins make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final. He, he's so close to winning that Stanley Cup, something he's tried his whole career for, and the Arizona Coyotes, a year after Quinn Hughes left, they steal the Stanley Cup from the Boston Bruins, giving them the 4-0 sweep treatment. You hate to see it. Headed into the 19th year here of this simulation, and Jack Hughes is back up to an 87 overall. So the decision to sign with Boston seemed like it was a good one because he, again, made the postseason. The Bruins finished fifth in the league, 104 points. Jack Hughes has another awesome year, 30 goals, 41 assists. He had over 70 points. I mean, the guy just will not give up. He wants that Stanley Cup, and it's not going to come this year because the Toronto Maple Leafs get their revenge on the Bruins, beating them in the second round in only five games. Going into year number 20 here, and there's no sign of Jack Hughes in Boston. He decides to sign with the Washington Capitals on another two-year deal at just under $6 million per. So he still thinks he has a lot left in the tank, but I think it was a mistake to leave the Boston Bruins because this team is not even close to the team that the Bruins are. I don't know about this signing. We'll see how it works out here in Washington. They don't look particularly great. Their goaltending kind of sucks, and it doesn't last long because there was a trade, and Jack Hughes is traded to the Buffalo Sabres at the trade deadline, and he fits in right away. 17 points in 18 games. Again, he had a great year. He's still a legitimate hockey player. They just cannot find a team to take him to the Stanley Cup. And maybe there's a reason why he wanted to go to Buffalo. Former teammate Ivan Fedorov also signs with the Buffalo Sabres. Hopefully they can hoist the Stanley Cup together. Unfortunately, it's not going to be in year 20 because Buffalo, not even close to sniffing the playoffs, but year number 21 shows Jack Hughes committed to Buffalo. He's still here. He has one year left on that deal at 39 years old. We still got uh, Fedorov on the back end as well, so they're trying one more crack at it to win a Stanley Cup here in Buffalo. I really thought he would have wanted to go to a contender, but he sticks the year out in Buffalo, and they do make the playoffs, finishing 19th in the league with 87 points, so the chance is still there. Jack Hughes has another monster season, 89 points. The guy will not go away at 40 years old. He wants that Stanley Cup. He deserves that Stanley Cup, and it's not going to happen because the Maple Leafs, once again, they eliminate Jack Hughes in the playoffs. It's been four or five times the Leafs seem to be his kryptonite. 22 years in this simulation, and Jack Hughes is off to another team, this time signing with Sunny Florida to end off his career. He signs with the Tampa Bay Lightning on a one-year deal at just over $8 million. It's not a super great team here in Tampa Bay either, so I'm wondering why he signed with Tampa. He has a really good year with 70 points, 52 apples, 18 goals, and it just wasn't enough to get it done. As you can see, the Tampa Bay Lightning finished 25th in the NHL, and just to add insult to injury, the Maple Leafs end up winning the Stanley Cup, and after all of this, Jack Hughes decides to retire. What a career. We're going to break down both Hughes brothers' stats at the end of the video. I just want to showcase a few things here. He did have over 100 games in the playoffs and 100 points, so he was a playoff performer. He is the all-time leader in every single offensive category for the New Jersey Devils. If you look here at the Canucks, Quinn Hughes didn't put up insane numbers, but he's still the best defenseman in franchise history. What a career for both of the Hughes brothers. Let's break down Quinn before we get to Jack. So Quinn Hughes played just under 1,400 games, 161 goals, 948 apples for 1,109 total career points. He obviously won the Stanley Cup in year number one and then had an entire career of failure and misery with the Canucks and the Arizona Coyotes. He did win that one Norris trophy. It would have been a lot more if it wasn't for Ryan Merkley and Adam Boquist. Those guys owned the defensive market. They owned the Norris Trophy. Now, this is where I want you guys to come in. Would you say he's a first ballot Hall of Famer? I'm going to say yes. The best defenseman in Canucks history. Over a thousand points. No brainer. He's a Hall of Famer. Now it's time for Jack Hughes. 1,863 games played. He played till he was 40 years old. Almost 700 goals at 688. 1,221 assists for just over 1,900 NHL 
NHL points. Now the big thing is, it's a goose egg for cups, zero Stanley Cups. He made it to the Eastern Conference Final twice and made it to the Stanley Cup Final once with the Boston Bruins. And the, another big thing is zero awards. He didn't win a Ted Lindsay, a Selkie, a anything. He didn't win anything at all, which was so shocking. I checked every single year. I thought eventually he was going to win, you know, maybe a Ted Lindsay at a couple hundred point seasons. Maybe he's going to win a Selkie or something. The guy didn't win anything, but he played with five different teams, New Jersey, Boston, Washington, Buffalo, and then ended his career with the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, over 1,900 points, no doubt he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm kind of edging more to Quinn Hughes on who had the better overall career. I mean, Stanley Cups are massive, but 1,900 points, that's huge as well. I was really hoping towards the end there that Jack would eventually get a Stanley Cup, but it just wasn't meant to be. Is he the best player ever to never win anything? I think so. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Who had the better career, Jack or Quinn? Maybe we'll do this in five more years when Luke Hughes is in the National Hockey League as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'd appreciate it if you shared this video, liked it, took a lot of time and effort, and I appreciate you watching. I will see you guys in the next one.